Hey guys, this is my 17th update of my Deep Blue Professional Rimless Tank. And as you can see right now, you're about to see something that moves in my tank. Let me see if I can get him going. Let me see it splash a little bit. Let me annoy him a little bit more. There it is. This is a, a weird flounder type of species. It's definitely not a flounder. If you can tell by the shape, it's more elongated. Uh, it has a very small mouth, so it's not in the flounder family. It's still unknown. I actually uh, contacted people at the Wet Web Media, and um, they didn't really uh, have an exact clue of what type of fish this is. But I don't know how big it'll get. He's small right now, about two and a half inches. I can see right here, if I could get it. There's the mouth. It's so tiny. And uh, I sort of eat some bloodworms earlier. It's a camouflage fish, but you can see, if you're familiar with flounders, uh, this is a different look to it. Uh, let me see if you can get it. Don't mind me moving in and out of focus, but uh, it's hard to uh, get him because he's on the corner right now. I just annoyed him. But uh, you can tell the brown on the background. There he goes. A little tough. But you can see the eye right here, and there he goes, right in there, covered. And um, he has a flounder look, but he's so small where he's not really a threat to my fish in the tank. He was very unique and just wanted to give him a shot. So we'll keep you updated on that. Now I've got some updates, as usual. Um, my crab here, I think it either molted, it was hiding, or it just passed its time and just died. Um, he usually molts and then maybe he had a soft shell, I'm assuming, and maybe he's hiding. But uh, you can see a seahorse upside down. Just talking about seahorses, um, my erectus seahorse had a internal bleeding or internal flesh disease or something where it uh, deteriorated its tail and unfortunately it had to uh, pass. I did replace it with a male and a female Cuda horse, tank raised, and they're pretty cool. Hopefully they um, bond up. Uh, as you look here in the front is the male, and right behind it is the female, I believe. You can see by the pouch, as you see the pouch on the male right there, and there's the female. It looks like they might be intertwining, which is a good way to uh, get them paired up. Tail Spot Blenny is doing very good as well. Let me just to focus here. Uh, no addition that I did get in this tank is they call it a gumdrop coral croucher. And he's part he's a scorpion family. Um, he hides a lot, but when you feed the tank, he usually shoots out, which I guess he moved from his usual spot. So uh, it might be a little tough finding him now, but he might be around the side here, but maybe later in the video we'll try to capture him because I did get some Aptasia X underneath this uh, coral here so maybe that's because I disrupted his home he decided to take a move to a different location and oh there he is I found him let me see if I can get a good look on him you only see a little bit of piece of there. Yeah, see if you can see him, it's a hard angle to get. Uh, he's gray with a lot of red spots. He looks like a clown goby, but he's actually a scorpion fish, like I said, and has a venomous spike. But it's very, very tiny. It grows two and a half inches. It's as you can see there. Boom. He's uh doing something over there. I'm probably just trying to move a hermit crab out of his little home there. But the cool little guy, very peaceful, very secretive. Um, and uh, he's cool when you put food near him. He shoots out and gets back in his little home. So, cool little guy, very, i say, it's rare to see in the aquarium trade. I mean, you'll see it in the diver's den if you go to a live aquarium here and there, which, um, but not often. And there's my orange spot, Gobi. Right here is my corky gorgonian, they call it, purple corky gorgonian with tan polyps. My Maxima is still doing good. The 
yellow gorgonian right here. It uh, it's closed up right now. I mean, you see some yellow on there, but it does get fully fully uh, extended there. Very cool um, sea fan there. It's good for the seahorses. My sea squirt finally kicked the bucket. I replaced it uh, by putting another uh, sun coral here. It's from Australia. It's a little frag. And, uh, you know, it has about orange polyps. So that's another new addition I had to this tank. Uh, the biggest change I did to this tank was from my last videos, I used to have my ACAN light on top of their rimless tank. And I decided to uh, get in the doghouse with my wife because she really didn't want me attach this thing to the ceiling but as you see now got this thing onto the ceiling so I think it just gives a better spread of the light so the corals get equal lighting and uh, hopefully I get like less receding uh, like this uh, coral here that because on the corner spot might not get a good light and it just dies off and I, I want to get my tank you know a nice even spread especially uh, the corals in the back because when this thing's over uh, the tank it doesn't sit too much um, off the off the water surface, so it doesn't really get into the back or the front. But the hammer coral frog spawn is still doing good. Clownfish is still not uh, having babies yet, but uh, they're pretty good. But they usually don't bite me when I'm cleaning the tank on the glass, but when I'm touching a rock. They're right after me. They don't really like me touching their home or even get close to their home. Cleaner shrimp's doing good. Fox coral's doing good with my little hermit crab. I got my Bobonius grapefruit here. He, uh, or he, probably he, the way it looks, is uh, eats off the stick now. Got him off the feeding stick with krill. Same thing along with my eel, which I'll probably do after this video. They like the little snack but beautiful colors and after it recovered from the ick situation it's growing those long little, little streamers on top and in the back tail so the fish is recovering from the uh, little fin rot that it occurred when it got sick and definitely a very cool fish very active not uh, very bold I would say it's not scared really much it doesn't get frightened when you go to the class and um, you know, it eats off the stick and it knows it's eating off the stick. My pair of blue uh, striped plate fish is still doing good. I just see one there, two there, but you see it. One's up there and the other one just went around the rock. Um, Halloween urchin right there doing pretty good. Marginless butterfly is still doing good. I think this might be new. I don't know if I did it in my last update, but I have a green war paint goby. And he likes hanging out here. There he is. He likes hanging out over here. As you can see his little face right there. Doing pretty good there as well. But see if these two pair up. Blue sponge is doing good. My cocoa worm lost one of its head, but generally it did that in the past and it grew back. I think it does that periodically. Um, maybe it's a spawning thing, I don't know, uh, but, oh, there it goes, the new fish I forgot to mention is my royal grandma. He actually has the same uh, colors of my uh, college, University of Albany, the golden purple, so, well, yellow and purple, same thing. But um, I always like these fish, they're very cheap, but I always find them pretty, uh, pretty cool little fish. He likes hanging out a hole there. But again, the cocoa worm lost its, one of its heads. Uh, I'm sure one of the crowns will grow back and uh, it'll be fine. So that's my uh, update. Guys, again, want to know, you know something about my tank and questions about any fish that uh, you know I have in my tank that you want to look into or compatibility. And there's my marginless butterfly fish. And um, you know, I'll get back to you. I can keep you guys updated, especially with that new flounder looking like fish. Again, it's still a mystery type of fish. It doesn't even have a good name out there. You can't even find it online. It's the only reason why I bought them is because uh, it's unique and different, and I kind of like that in my tank. Uh, but definitely, I sort of eat some bloodworms, which is a good start that it's eating. So that, that means it's going to do good. And fish like that usually are very hardy. 
like the uh, scorpion fish, anything that's kind of dangerous, like a grouper or something like that. They usually the lionfish. They're usually very hardy animals. I don't know why, but uh, they're definitely uh, definitely better than some like delicate fish that are pretty in color, like the antheuses and stuff like that. But uh, things doing good in this tank, and uh, even though there's still ick in this tank, and there will be unless I stop putting something in the tank for. 12 months till this whole thing, uh, you know, dies off with the cycles. Uh, it's in good low count where the fish are very healthy and they just don't let the ick take over and, you know, they're not going to get the spots anymore. So the different uh, stuff I used, I said in combined with water changes and uh, feeding and make sure the fish are eating, uh, it was a success of getting uh, the fish back to where it was. It was very scary at the point that all my fish were really in bad shape uh, with the ick and I uh, was able to uh, recover from that with minimal losses. So, see you guys next time. Oop, let me get, end the video with a, a good shot of this coral croucher. I mean, before you couldn't get a good shot of it, but look how beautiful this fish is. And it has like hair like appendages like it's fuzzy looking if you look at it from the side it has like a fuzzy look to it but because it has a little like hair like um on its body other than like scales but cool little guy and uh very peaceful and hangs out in the tank yellow sponge still growing everywhere all right guys have a good one